Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Welcome to another episode of the FY Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. Gwen here, and today I'm with a um, very amazing financial advisor. She's young, and she's making a name for herself in the industry. So I'd like you all to um, welcome Hannah. So hi, Hannah. How's it going? Hi, Gwen. <laughs> so welcome to the podcast. So you're one of like the our very first episodes here in the podcast. How are you? Um, I'm fine. How about you? <laughs> Doing <laughs> great. <as well. laughs> so we've actually um, uh, talked about a few things before we mm-hmm. started recording. Recording, right so mm-hmm. but I, I just want to introduce you to our listeners as well so Hannah has been in the industry um, since 2019 but what was interesting about that is she started really young so she started um, 21 years old so Hannah can you tell us about that like why did you start early like what happened that made you start in the financial advice industry so young I started young because I learned financial literacy um, when I was like 18 and I also practiced that. Um, I also want to impart it to other people in for being um, financially literate. That's why um, I myself um, joined in the financial advice industry. Uh, that's really great because I know for a fact that when I was in tw- uh, 21 years old, mm-hmm. I had no financial literacy whatsoever so i'm really happy that like when i heard that you started when you were 21 years old i was like yay that is actually like the goal for like financial advisors here in the philippines right so for Mm -hmm. the 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 younger um filipinos to start getting the financial literacy early on so that they can get ahead in building their wealth in paying off any debts or you know steering clear of any bad debts and anything that associates with debt and lack of insurance so you started at 21 years old and you're still in the same company right you're in phil am right yeah. now yes that's correct um uh, our current client is actually millennials Filipino mm. millennials, yes. Yeah. So we target young people, um, especially those um, fresh graduates. We mm-hmm. do financial li- financial literacy most of the time um, pre-COVID. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So I, I know that you guys, uh, you and your partner, by the way. So um, Hannah has a partner slash partner in life so business partner slash partner in life who's working as a financial advisor as well and together they um set up like financial literacy seminars right i know that you've you've had those before covid so right now since your targets are millennials and you can no longer do those um face-to-face seminars like what do you do to continue your uh, financial literacy program Right now, we are doing it um, over Zoom. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we do have um, private groups on Facebook that um, we regularly post regarding finances, investments, and the like. Ah, yes. That's the financial coach duo, right? For for, for you and your partner, right? So, and this is very interesting to me because um, I know that there are some uh, people out there who find it difficult to work with their partners, but you seem to work really well together. So, like, do you have a, a certain strategy on, like, uh, on how you're able to manage your business together very well? 
the moment that we both met um i was looking for an insurance myself so um yeah and then when we were like boyfriends and girlfriends um we had we share the same passion towards financial literacy so i think mm. um we don't have conflict or it's not difficult for me to deal with him regarding our advocacy because um ah. both of us yeah really have the same vision and goal ah that's good mm-hmm. so both with the same vision now that's really great when you know you're starting out with your business but So he was a financial advisor first, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, um I was actually a client. Mm, yeah. Ah, uh, so you were, were his financial, Yeah, financial advisor. Yeah, yes. And then he was so just cool. referred by a friend. Ah, so it started with a financial advice. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting that's I, i actually didn't know about that and we've been talking for a while now about your partner so i i'm actually wanting to get him on board the podcast soon so i hope that i get to talk to him soon but when you were starting out so in that case when you were starting out 2019 your partner was the one who um helped you start in the financial advice um or as a financial advisor yeah that- um he gave me tips to um succeed mm-hmm. in the financial advice industry though um we we were in the separate companies way back then but mm-hmm. um yeah he really did mentor me mm, that's really mm-hmm. nice and what were the the struggles that you were facing when you were just starting out it was like talking to clients because since i'm new in the industry like they're not very well versed of me yet that i am with phil i'm already or i am a an advisor already so that was the uh, first um struggle i had and how were you able to overcome that like because i know that there are a lot of um most of our viewers i think are going to be people who start out as a financial advisor mm-hmm. so i'd like to i'd like them to know like how were you able to overcome um not being known as a financial advisor and and reaching out to prospective clients well everyone everybody starts from like scratch or from nobody right so we just got to um make a name for ourselves like through um social media or referrals from your close friends because mo- because for me um my first clients were uh, my friends so they referred me to their friends and then my name or yeah my name being a financial advisor is already well known to other people so that's mm. how yeah yeah that's true so you do start out i think here in the philippines i don't know with other countries yet but i i've noticed a pattern that here in the philippines we usually really um start to make a name for ourselves um through our friends our families uh and because i remember a friend of mine who is a, an Australian financial advisor said that he would never provide financial advice to family because it does get complicated but it's the opposite here yes, in the, the Philippines true. so far with with the people that I've um have interviewed and asked the question so that's true um I know that most of the financial advisors that I know as well start off with um their family and friends being their clients as well. So now that you're you have your ideal client, so how were you able to like determine your ideal client as well? Like did it become like a natural thing for you to target millennials or did you really think it through that I really want to like focus on helping millennials with their financial advice or like how did that work for you I really wanted to target millennials because as what I can see uh, most of my friends isn't um like financially literate and um most of the millennials only, only think like yolo or something like that but you know, um in a matured perspective or yeah my mindset is way matured um mm. i want them to have the best future that's why um i really want to tar- 
to target uh, millennials because it is also young it is also easier for them to start saving because they don't have much responsibilities and then the earlier they get responsible with their money um the happier their marriage or their future will be yes yeah, so mm-hmm. I, i truly agree with that and because you're so because you're targeting millennials that don't really have um fin- isn't really financially illiterate because let's face it here in the philippines we don't have financial literacy um embedded in our school system so um in that case that's why you hold on uh, you you hold seminars about financial literacy so aside from that and i know that's where you get potential clients right through your seminars yes, but yes, yes. aside from like what's the turnaround for for a seminar like how many clients do you typically get with a seminar usually um when we do a seminar we usually um pool the people like we need to target 50 people and then um the conversion for that from 50 it will be around like 20 clients who will yeah be our our clients well, that's really great so in in that case doing seminars for financial literacy actually gives you a a really great turnaround because yeah. from 50 people who attended the seminar you get 20 clients so that's yeah. a really good turnaround and um so those and those would definitely refer you to other people right yes because um most of our seminars are really knowledge based and from experience and um based from the reviews because after our um seminar we always ask them for reviews um it's always good yes i know because i've um i'm actually i've looked through your uh, Facebook page, the Financial Coach Duo, and you already have 1,800 likes. So I'm sure that there are a lot of good reviews there. So this is how you target um, your your ideal clients, right? By doing seminars. But mm-hmm. how do you reach out to them? Like, how do you get people to come to your seminar in the first place? We post on social media the benefits or the advantages of um, what they are going to get if they are going to attend the seminar. Yes. And of oh, course, so you yeah. you use social media, um, Facebook? Yes, Facebook mainly, and our um, seminars are for free, so we don't mm-hmm. charge them anything. Yeah, that's the advantage. Yeah, when we do seminar because it's for free, so they could learn for free. So. Why wouldn't they attend? It's for free. Anyway, I definitely agree with you that a lot of people would really be enticed with um, a free seminar because I know for a fact that um, before I got into becoming really like borderline obsessed with financial literacy, Mm -hmm. um, when I first started out, I also um, had the privilege to um, go to one of the seminars for a financial advisor here in Cebu as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also like a a bit famous here in Cebu. I think um, I, I think you're familiar with them, Haruhai Life. Ah yes, from Sun Life. Yeah. Ah okay, yeah. so they're from Sun yeah. Life. So they yes, also so. attended our seminar actually. Ah mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. So yes, and that that was one of the um, the first like financial literacy seminars that I was able to attend online. And it was also free. Um, And they did provide really good, like basic information about uh, financial literacy. So I'm sure Mm -hmm. it's, it would be the same for you as well. But in that case, you mentioned that out of 50 attendees, you get 20 clients. So do you have like a flow on uh, or do they go through a certain type of program from being like you uh, an attendee of your seminar to being a client like do you have any additional processes for for those people um we don't have 
processes, but um, once they become our client, or even if they don't really become our client yet, um, we do mentor them, um, mm. especially on the investment side. Yeah, like stocks, um, bonds, and how to like grow your money, like credit cards, because most of the people think that like credit card is like, a bad debt right but in where in mm -hmm. fact um you can really take advantage of credit card yeah so that's one of um like the things that our clients really um liked about our seminar and then that's why um like the conversion rate is high because um we have a lot of segment in our seminar it's not just about um life insurance but it's a overall um financial aspect all right so you you actually provide like an overall financial wellness to yeah. um to your attendees yeah that's really yeah. that's a really great idea because i know like from experience that for most seminars that i've attended to they just focus mainly on insurance so yeah. you actually your partner actually go ahead and educate people not just in insurance yeah. but investments stocks and even um credit management so yes, that's really correct. that's very interesting and mm -hmm. i can see why people would really want to be your clients <laughs> yeah. so and, and i've also i've seen in your in your profile that you're also like aside from being a financial advisor you're also an investment property consultant can you tell us about that Yes, so um, basically that's um, a real estate salesperson. So I sell um, house and lot, lot or anything, um, any real estate. And um, yeah, we do have a business. It's a rent to own business. We find it really profitable. So um, that's why um, we ventured out into real estate because we also wanted to share it to people that they can really make good money out of real estate, especially condominiums. When you re let it um, like rent to own basis, not just Airbnb, it's really profitable, especially this pandemic. Airbnb is not doing good, right? Because daily rentals are not um, allowed. Um, rent to own is really um, great for any season. Yes, I agree. Long term um, um, passive income. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and when did you start? Like, when did you realize that you wanted to become an investment property consultant? Is it the same time as um, being a financial advisor? Um, actually, I started when I was eighteen years old. Oh, yeah, it became my side hustle when I was in college because I I'm the one who is paying for my tuition. Ah, all right. So this was your side hustle as an investment property consultant at such an early age, 18. So and you're you're licensed, um, like you're a licensed broker as um, well, right? Is I'm that registered? Um, ah, registered. registered. Yeah. Right. And you started at 18. Ah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you've paired it with you becoming a financial advisor. So mm -hmm. is that like something that you've planned to do? Um, because I know that investment in um, property and financial advice does go along together. Yes, I have planned that because um, I really do value insurance as well because my both of my parents died um, of cancer and then they don't have insurance. So we need to like um, sell our lot just to um, pay for the chemo. And then as I grew up, I realized that having insurance is really um, the best thing to do to um, preserve your wealth. I agree. So that's what happened to um, to me too. Actually, um, my my when my dad died, there were still bills to pay, and because they had no insurance. Mm -hmm. um, I had to pay for everything as well. So I do understand. I think most of the financial advisors here, or at least so far that I have interviewed and have talked to casually, they usually started financial advice because of what happened to like their parents or from um, like a close family member, like a sad story about, you know, uh, not being able to find the money when disaster struck. Mm -hmm. And so it's very interesting that you, you had to go through that 
mm-hmm. to losing your parents as well and and you became aware of the need to be financially literate yeah. and to actually mm-hmm you know, really take care of your money. And now you're an investment property consultant and a financial advisor. So like you not only advise people with regards to how they um, can get the best insurance uh, or how they can handle their debt, you can also advise them on the best investments or properties to to get to the market right so how do you see yourself now or like what are your plans for for this year for both you know property consulting and f- financial advice now that we're in the like we're still in this covid situation and we're on lockdown how do you see yourself running your business um, I would be running my business virtually still. Um, good thing is that IC or Insurance Commission here in the Philippines is still um, allowing advisors to virtually um, sign papers and yeah. clients as well. Yeah, so that's one advantage that we don't need to go out our house to meet up a client because there is technology. And as well as for my real estate business, um, we can do it um, online. So most of the time, I'll be doing it online. Ah, oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. So you like, there's no real need to go to the site, like while you're doing uh, consulting work. You just you can just do it online yeah. now. But how do you do like like do you still do ocular inspections if if uh, like, like if a prospective client want to check the property? Yes, um, yes. If the client um, really insists, then we we will do that um, by appointment basis. Um, most of the client r- right now. Um, most of my clients, as my experience, um, they will go to the site by themselves and then they will contact yeah, us for um, reservation. Or sometimes they will just ask for pictures or 360 view of the unit and then, yeah, it suffices them. So there's no need ah. to yeah, go to the site. Oh, that's good. So technology has really helped you in like streamlining your business and it's, um, and I, it's very helpful that you are pro technology as well, because I know that there are um, other people like financial advisors who are having a difficult time adjusting to like doing seminars Mm -hmm. online or like meeting up for an online coffee with, with, um, prospective clients so I'm glad to know that you're you're having or you've streamlined your process so that everything can just go online now how do you see yourself even if outside of the pandemic do you th- uh, and everything goes back to normal do you think you'd still like prefer doing these um, online meetings with with your clients or do you or can't can yeah. you wait to get back to the outside world and meet them in person yes um i also think it depends upon the client whether um they want to meet online or virtually i am either of that i am um flexible because i always um yeah um i always go with um what the client thinks it's best for him or her and also um it's really nicer to meet in person because um it's really just different if you guys have physical appearances and talk <laughs> yeah physically and also um the disadvantage of doing it online is there are distractions that might cause the client to um, not listen well or your message or the message that you deliver to the client will not be um, totally comprehended something like that mm-hmm. I understand yes uh, I agree I think so and I think the um, one of my uh, friends who's also a financial advisor would agree with you as well that there's uh, no beating the human touch so mm-hmm. he's also excited to get up there and meet his clients again um, 
in the office. Now, um, I just, I, I don't want to keep you here, Han. We've been um, talking for a while now. <laughs> but I, would... I really enjoy talking with you. <laughs> yeah, so we haven't really talked in in like forever. I think the last time we talked was last year, right? Yeah. So it's it, it's Quite actually good to catch up as well. But um, for those of the like our listeners out there who are starting out or they're they're stuck in their business, like, are there any like advice that you'd like to give them in order to you know? reach their ideal client because i know for you you've already found yours but how uh, like any advice that you can give them in order to reach their ideal clients first of all um they need to start because you know starting is always the hardest part Mm -hmm. of getting something ahead and also um always go back to your why like why do you want to do this or why do you want to reach to that client because it will always give you the motivation to do so so that's what i'm always doing because i really want to um like motivate millennials to be financially literate not just about insurance but about the totality of um, financial literacy all right (laughs) thanks so much han so i'm really happy to know that a person who's still in their early 20s actually is really very passionate about um, financial advice. I know that that is also like my personal goal to be able to educate Mm -hmm. other people, um, especially the millennials, like the, the new generation of Filipino specifically with like the perks of being financially literate yeah. and actually yeah. following through with, you know, your financial goals and how it can positively impact your life. So I'm really mm-hmm. happy that there is one more person out there who I can trust that will continue that advocacy. So thank you so much, Hannah, for so much, um, joining me. <laughs> Have a good one. Good <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes we will do that soon 